My friends, do you remember when the Rocketeer had to take on interdimensional aliens to keep them from conquering Earth? Well, if you're familiar with the real-life inspiration for the Rocketeer, you'll know that's actually not too far from the truth. But more importantly, it's the basis for Dark Void, a 7th generation shooter slash flight action hybrid. Dark Void introduced some cool verticality to the shooter genre, and since it's being delisted from Steam, I thought we'd take a look at it. Welcome back to the Review Den. Dark Void comes from Airtight Studios, though you might know them better as Fossa Studios, who worked on the MechWarrior and Crimson Skies games for Microsoft. Okay, now I get that reference. And yeah, they pretty much gave us a modern sci-fi take on the old Rocketeer vs. the Moon Men story. You have your dashing 1930s hotshot and the femme fatale, who find themselves warped from the Bermuda Triangle into the Void, a world between worlds. You'll join the local resistance in their fight against the evil cybernetic aliens, the Watchers, who are planning an invasion of Earth. And you'll do so with the help of a nifty rocket pack, in this case from Nikola Tesla rather than Howard Hughes. And this is where the game should come into its own against other cover-based shooters. In addition to standard flight, your jetpack allows you to hover, which lets you flank and otherwise get the drop on enemies. It's not necessary, you can stay on the ground and just peek around corners through most of the game, but if you've got the urge to go Star Siege Tribes, the option is there. And speaking of cover, the game's other standout feature is vertical cover, which lets you line up on the edge of platforms to take out enemies above or below you. Obviously, Gears of War wasn't the first cover shooter, but it did explode the genre, and games like Dark Void and Inversion tried to keep things fresh by adding the third dimension. On paper, things here sound really cool. Unfortunately, in practice, everything in Dark Void winds up being very, very average. Not bad, I didn't say bad, just very average. Alright, how's the gameplay? Well, by this point, games like Halo and Gears had mastered giving just enough auto-aim to make up for the gamepad, while requiring real skill and precision for headshots. In Dark Void, the auto-aim is very aggressive, sometimes getting lost between multiple targets under the crosshair. And because the enemies are really spongy, nothing in the combat feels dynamic. You just go through the motions waiting for a red cursor and hold the trigger until the baddies die. Blind fire is super accurate, so even on hard, you're not in much danger since you can stay in safety and still pull off easy takedowns. The default rifle goes a little wild, but all the alien pickups are super accurate. Add in overly forgiving hit detection, and the game kind of feels like it's playing itself. Same for the verticality. The vertigo style sections look cool, and they can be fun, but the enemy rarely charges or flanks, so you mostly can stay in place and take pot shots. And while the jetpack is a great idea, you can totally forget it's there until some platforming comes up. If the enemies were hyper-aggressive with suppressing fire, then jetting away to turn the tables would have been totally cool, but they aren't. You can just walk around and duck behind stuff like normal, and you'll be fine. Now, the flight sections are a bit more challenging, but mostly because of stiff controls and the field of view being so narrow. Enemies are more aggressive in looping around and chasing you, but there is a look to button to keep things from getting cheap. In these stages, you can jack friendly or enemy units to boost your firepower, and the quick time events are kept simple and predictable, which is nice. The real complaint here is your speed, which is sometimes too fast for the size of the stages. Games like Halo kept the Banshees nice and slow so it was easy to control and explore, but in Dark Void you'll have to claw your index finger on the brake a lot. Now for presentation, if you're watching, it should be apparent, but for those listening, graphics are really middle of the road. Nothing impressive, although it smooths out decently on PC. On consoles, Dark Void could easily pass as a between-generation game, like something that could have been on the OG Xbox if they really tried. But mostly, it's just uninspired. Enemies are all slight variations on skeletal-style exos, although the larger ones are kinda cool reptilian designs. But you could easily mistake the heroes for any modern characters. Even their dialogue is strangely nonplussed by everything they're going through. As in a 1930s cargo pilot is suddenly fighting the Terminator and using plasma weapons, and the reaction is just, oh, well, that's interesting. And these are the same devs that made the Crimson Skies games, which had plenty of fun with the alternate 1930s history. It just feels like they weren't really trying here. 
And that pretty much sums up Dark Void. Nothing in the game is broken or bad, it's just really average. You get to blast aliens on land and with a jetpack, but you'll probably forget about the whole thing once you finish. It's a rental. A weekend, 6 out of 10, not great, not terrible. The good news is, if you're interested, this was on 360 and PS3, and those discs are cheap on eBay. But on PC, where it could be smoother, these were the dark days of early Fizz X, and some cutscenes lock or hard crash unless you cap the frame rate. On the boards, they say under 60 FPS, but I actually had to go under 30 to get past them. Then you can open things up. Oh, and you'll probably want a controller for the flight sections. If this all looks fun to you, then hey, more power to you, enjoy. But for me, this felt like a filler game. Not an A-level multi-platform like, say, Vanquish, but not a fail either, just filler. The game totals out to about six or seven hours, with six weapons to upgrade and some journals to collect for replayability. And for completion's sake, there was a fun little tie-in, a side-scrolling 8-bit demake, Dark Void Zero. It apparently began as an April Fool's joke, but Capcom marketed it as Lost Media, complete with Western Mega Man-style cover art. There's three stages, it's under an hour, but you can hover with the jetpack and blast enemies. Fun. And there we go. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and if you would like to help a small channel grow, would you be my next subscriber? And remember to keep going, because you are worth it.